probably some between Thanksgiving and the first of the new year. When they do that, it's going to be parallel to the financial disasters that are happening worldwide because they, they say they want to destroy the dollar. But the one who's going to control the world currency in the end is going to be America with our supercomputer array, which is worldwide. And this, they'll move toward this basket of currencies, but it'll all be virtual. And if you want to look at the biblical term, it's called the mark of the beast. They want to have a system where no one has coin in your pocket or even cash paper in your wallet. Everything is electronic divots in a computer system. Every transaction, action, and every bit of your behavior is in a database. That's ultimately their goal. And of course, that can lead into the other topics, the 2012 issues. Well, let me ask you about this G20 meeting that Daniel Estelin reported on. And I'm wondering if you agree agree with his conclusions, because what is actually being publicized about that is that America and Russia, certain countries were working to to actually surprisingly to, to bring the dollar to zero, whereas supposedly the Illuminati Rothschild contingent decided to halt that for some reason. It's all part of a game. Let me tell you what they want. If I was the president of the United States tomorrow, I'd probably want to devalue the dollar slowly because the balance of trades is killing us because the Renminbi and these Asian currencies are too valuable, are too cheap, in other words, versus how much they're manufacturing. So all our manufacturing is going there. So our balance is basically against China and the Asian countries. What they really want to do is they want to re-jockey the world currencies. And when they do that, they need to have this dialectic for external consumption, where the Rothschilds are saying one thing, they're putting one hat on, the other guy's putting a different hat on. Ultimately, what they're moving to is a virtual currency that's a world currency tied directly to the cap-and-trade, the global green currency, and eco-communism, I call it. And they may tell you otherwise, but America's not going away, and America's not going into a depression. In fact... America will emerge from this, and so will China, richer and more powerful. And so will Russia. The other third, or second world countries will do moderately better, and the third world countries will do pretty bad, actually. Because with a cap and trade, we will purchase their carbon credits, and they will starve in the dark. And that's what the ultimate agenda is, because their agenda is to starve out the third world countries and have the first and second world utilize their resources. So uh, although this jockeying is occurring on externally, from you see these two different dialectics, the real issue with the G20 is they're moving us in the next two years, roughly, toward a world global e- electronic currency and a whole new glo- global economic order where everybody will, in the first and second world, will be enriched and more powerful, Russia, China, America, etc. Basically, the G20 nations and the third world will be a disaster basket case. Dr. Bill, I wanted to ask if you were familiar with Lindsay Williams's most recent... Yeah, report. I have. I'm, I'm very familiar with what Lindsay Williams talked about. And uh, what you were suggesting yeah, the, that the U.S. was going to emerge stronger from this it seems to be 180 degrees from what he was reporting as the plan for the next two years. And I wondered if you could reconcile that somehow. Well, just think of it logically. And you can kind of, uh, as I say, it's just like uh, our relativistic physics. If you had a total collapse of the economy, you move back within a matter of days or weeks to the city-states. You no longer have a new world order. You have 2,000 city-states around the planet. You don't have a new world order at all. So what Lindsay Williams is talking about is totally unrealistic and isn't going to happen. It's not possible to happen. Okay, And the reason why it's not possible is because the people that are in total control of all the chips on the table of both sides of the dialectic or multi-level dialectics are the globalists. So they may put one hat on and say they're going to do this and one hat on and say they're going to do that. And then you're thankful that in the meantime, you've got a much higher level of unemployment. You've got most of the people have lost their equity in their homes. You've got, you know, maybe more America embroiled in yet another war in Afghanistan, but it's not a third world war. You can still go to the movies and there's still not chaos. And you continue to believe the story that there's going to be change and everybody's going to move forward. And we've got national health care, even though it's not really very good. It's uh, kind of like a poorly run repair shop. So, um, <clears throat> firstly, I, I, I think that his information, his intel, is probably correct in terms of what he receives. I don't doubt that he didn't receive this information. And that there may be a segment that says that they're going to pull down the American economy. You can't do that. It 
without America, there is no new world order. This idea that China was going to be the engine of the world economy is pure foolishness. Just travel to China, and you'll see all these fancy new shopping centers that they've been building because they've been consuming 80% of the world's concrete are being boarded up, and the stores are empty, and people aren't spending money because the Chinese are smart with their money, and they realize that the world economy is going down the toilet. And they're an export economy. That's why in China, rather than sending all the people back from the factories, they're piling up all this material they can't ship to Walmart and all the distributors in America because the same way as in Germany, the cars are piling up on the docks from Mercedes-Benz and all these other car manufacturers in Seoul, South Korea, et cetera. So, yeah, we're headed for very hard times, but we're not headed for what they say. We're headed not for depression. We're headed for the mark of the beast. We're headed for a global world economy where the first and second world reconsolidate their power and the third world becomes destroyed. That's a really interesting take on, on the situation. It sounds actually like, to me, it sounds sounds logical. Yeah, it, yeah, it makes sense. To, you'll see that if you collapsed America, America's a policeman of the world, no country can forward a force. What they really want to do eventually, and this is their ultimate plan, which is not only the CFR and the Royal Institute for International Studies to join America and Britain and, of course, the alliance with Europe, but the ultimate alliance is to is to ally the world powers into one global force, which means a global force integrating America and China and Russia as a global eco-police and the global world police as a world armed forces. Now, people find that hard to believe, but the fact is war is obsolete, but they have to maintain an enemy. So they've created this false enemy of Islam, and they've supported the Wahhabist school so they can demonize everyone to go after Islamic peoples. And of course, what that does is it creates a situation where people have to have an enemy to build up an armed forces. But their ultimate goal isn't... They know that anybody starts an asymmetric war on this planet, no one's going to survive. You know, all these other countries, including Iran, have advanced fuel air bombs, biological weapons, and others. So, and they have alliances with Russia and China. So the idea that we're going to go in a big thermonuclear fireball it would only happen by accident, and the area that's most likely is where there's a little, a very narrow window of verification that there's incoming, and that's between India and Pakistan. Iran cannot counterbalance Israel, so that's not going to happen, but India and Pakistan could have a local nuclear war because they only have a two-minute warning to verify whether or not something is a real threat or it's a pseudo-threat. Basically, that's, that's what I see going on there. So. I think he thinks that America will not even have the money to revolt and all this stuff is complete foolishness. Firstly, if the states go bankrupt in the next year, what will happen is the states will secede from the Union, starting with Texas, and they'll do it probably within a matter of six months to a year, if that if that eventually reality happens. And they simply reform the Republic of America. And in most likelihood, the next Canada, and Canada would become, in a sense, the new United States of America, Canada versions. So I, I, I don't. I see America expanding, one way or the other. I don't see it disappearing, and I see its power increasing, not decreasing. Okay, and Bill, when when you say you see it, you're also are you getting intelligence to this effect? I'm getting intelligence, and I'm getting advanced information, which I'll tell you about in a while. That tells me that the engine that's driving the world toward this timeline is not. Russia, it's not China, it's not Japan, it's America. America is the chief, you want to call it leader, nation on the planet. And there's there's not going to be a peaceful future, a future for mankind, unless America does a proper leadership role on this planet. And if there's no America and it's wiped out financially and otherwise doesn't exist, mankind's not going to survive. Can you address what you talked to me about the other day, which is what the move that China made on gold? Yeah, well, what happened is... Uh, China made this move on gold, which was reported by Steve Quayle, and I've got some other corroboration that in the spring when uh, Hillary Clinton went over, and since then Geithner has gone over several times, uh, that they gave guarantees that they're going to support the U.S. dollar because the Chinese want to basically, they don't want to see all their trillions of dollars denominated disappear into nothing. So making this public display to say that they're going to demand gold through the world court is like filing a lawsuit against somebody where you know you can't win. It's basically demanding that America play ball with China 
on a public stage so that they are a jockey for their position on the New World Order and they don't get wiped out.